Going back to the discography and where we were up to was actually 2013. Yeah, and then in, tapes. Yeah, and then in 2014, you dropped something else. Yeah, my first album, Inside My Insomnia. That's right. Now, can you walk us through from 2014 all the way up until now? Yeah. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I dropped Inside My Insomnia. 2014 was my first album. Um, still still proud of it. Obviously, I'm stoked that I've gotten better. But, you know, like I got, got the distro deal with OB, so to have... My store, uh, my CD in a store was just like, you know, that, that took a while to sink in to be able to walk into JV on release day and cop that shit, you mm-hmm. know. I don't, I don't even think I deserved it then. I think I was just in the right place at the right time. But, um, yeah, and then I dropped um, a mixtape called Nerve Damage a couple of years after that. Um, that had, like, I had Jimmy the Junkie on there spitting some crazy shit. <laughs> had um, Greeley... All the psych ward, bit of belief, few other people. I just like working with the homies, you know? Yeah. But man, Jimmy the Junkie, he he turned his verse around quicker than most MCs. He had me something back in under 24 hours. And like, you could tell because he was shouting out and it was just, yeah. And he, for someone that's not an MC, he, he, he came through with a classic verse. And, um, and yeah, so, and then I think a year after that, I dropped the album with quartets called Day Verse Night, Day Versus Night. That was just him on the production. And um, yeah, that was the first time I'd done a whole project with just one producer, which was a whole different experience, but it was it was dope. You know, Cortex is a G, he can do just about anything uh, musically. And um, yeah, now, um, oh yeah, now I've just dropped the album with Misk, which I actually bought you a copy of. Oh, as you should. Second to none. Um, with, with my boy Misk, we just dropped that a couple of months ago. And yeah, we were stoked. Like, we got to number one on the hip hop charts on release day, which was just like another another thing. I remember we were kind of like, you don't want to focus on that, but obviously it makes you feel a bit better when it is getting that recognition. You know, we're like, mm. maybe it'd be cool if we got like top ten or something. And then someone woke me up, and we we're like, oh, you're number two, you know. And then I was like, oh, how are we gonna have an album called Second to None and sit on the second spot? And we we're next to Hilltops and we're touring the world and shit. And then a couple hours later. I thought, I'll give it one more check, and it was number one. Did a little dance, came a little in my pants, and, <laughs> um, yeah, we went out. We went and got fucked up that night. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just a good feeling, and we just wrapped our asses off on that project, you know. It was just, yeah, rapping with my boy Misk, it just brought the best out in both of us just because he's just, yeah, a weapon, and I knew I had to step up, and I didn't want to get made to look silly like I did on Devil's Resume again. <laughs> now, I'm looking at the features here. You know, you've got uh you got Mitchos. So is that Swifty of D twelve? Yeah. Bit of belief, complete, Cortex. So you got a few here. Do you have a favorite song off the album? Yeah, it would be with it's called Without It, featuring Jeremiah Morgan, who's a dope ass singer from back home. Um, we just dropped a video for it and it was just different to the rest of the album. It was a lot slower. It was just uh lot uh, more of a deeper track which i think the project was missing um a lot of it's more like you know just barry kind of banging stuff and um yeah now that we we've started doing it live it's just like it's just cool to slow it down and mm. see people's faces when you actually connect them to them with a bit more of a you know more emotional level and yeah. and as artists as well we need to get some shit off our chest every now and then we can't always just be i'm gonna kill you in the booth motherfucker <laughs> blah 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 you know but we can but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. That's my favourite off there for sure. And it's only just become my favourite. Um I think it's normal for your, your favourite tracks to change. Change, yeah, over time that's but, right. But um I think that gets it because it was just the most meaningful for me and then we dropped this video where we had all this old footage from shows we've done from way back in the day. So it's like a it's like a photo, like a video album for us. Looking at where Australian rap has been, where it is now and where it's going. You know, one of the latest things that I feel has been introduced is, you know, like groups like One Four. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, who's um, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name. They did that joint engineers. Um, guys from Melbourne. Uh, HP Boys. HP Boys. That's a banger. That is, yeah, that's some next level shit for me. Yeah. I was like, wow. 
Twenty One District. Twenty One District. Yeah, I, I haven't. I probably have heard a song. I don't know, but who we in the recently? Yeah, we we crank that no effect shit when we're fucking. Like, like, dudes are requesting it in the clubs and shit. Yeah, like, yeah. What What's your um? You know, what's your thoughts on that brand of Australian hip hop that's coming out now? I like it because everyone's not just, you know, conforming to one style. It's like just like like you say, you don't want to be an artist your whole career and make something that isn't actually you, or because you're trying to be like whatever's popping, you know. So obviously, it was something that's missing. Like especially that whole like Polynesian scene. Like that's mad that they've got you know like they've been kind of slept on for a minute, you know. So and they're just getting like mad exposure and like even in Sydney on our balcony, someone drove by and you can hear him like pump up, pumping one forward. Instantly we're fucking ready, you know? Like, <laughs> so yeah, no, props to those dudes, that whole new wave. And like, and like I said, just the fact that not even like some of them just making shit that's never been done before and stuff like that, you know? Um, and yeah, like it doesn't matter, you know, what, where you are, what you've done, like, um, it's not like people are less worried, I think, about what that city or what that crew's doing. And it's like, what, you know, what can we do? What What's our fucking shit we want to represent? Mm. So, yeah, no, I'm all for it, man. Like, I'm not going to make songs like that because that's not our, our thing. But I still bump a bit of everything, you know. And, yeah, we've been peeping their shit. Yeah, man. So, yeah, respect to them, lads. The, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah.